Hello everyone, let's talk about the world feature in its Soulsborne game. Let's begin with Demon Souls. Believe it or no, but the world feature in Demon Souls is a world tendency. Let me explain quickly what world tendency even is. When you enter any location for the first time, you will have a pure white world tendency. But the second you die in a human body, enemies will do 25% more damage. Your max health will be cut in half and a few red phantoms might appear. Why is this a problem? Well, let's imagine that I am soul snoob. I don't want to use guides and I got killed in a human form. I found an item which gives me my humanity back. And let's imagine that I'm tryharding many eaters. They are pretty hard bosses and I want to fight them with all of my health. And each time I die in a human form, they are getting stronger. I just want you to realize this madness, a game that is designed to kill a player over and over will be harder each time you die in a human body. And in order to avoid that, player has to kill himself in a nexus and run around with half of his max health. Just I don't even know what to say. If you don't understand why War Tennis is a pain in the ass, do the old Heroes Rambach when you died in a human form at least once. After that, tell me how fun was that. Not to mention pure Black War Tendency Rambachs, which are just one shot hit, one shot hit, one shot hit, one shot hit. Dark Souls 1, Black Knight Weapons. And no, I am not joking at all. Let me explain why I think that Black Knight Weapons are the worst Dark Souls 1 feature. They are simply way too good on new game. Not only they do insane amount of damage, each of these weapons is the best choice in their weapon type. The best X in Dark Souls 1 is Black Knight. X. The best halberd in Dark Souls 1 is a Black Knight halberd. The best straight sword is a Black Knight straight sword. And not only that, they are very easy to get. In this game, there are more than enough Black Knights to get their weapon. If you got any of these weapons, you can say to bosses, Matao Hirake. You think it's the end? Nope. The second you reach Anor Londo, you can update them to max level without any problem. Problem. You can fight Ornian Smoke with Black Knight weapon at plus 5 and absolutely demolish them. If for example Claymore needs special calls, special stones and for each update you need to visit both Andre and Giant, for Black Knight weapons you just need to consume all souls that you have plus a farm for 10 min and you have a weapon that allows you to easy kill even DLC bosses in mid the game. And also, these weapons do 20% extra damage to demons. And in Dark Souls 1, there are more than enough demon bosses and not only bosses in this game. Black Knight weapons are just busted on new game compared to other weapons. I know for a fact that nearly half of Dark Souls 1 players haven't played with other weapons simply because why should I take, for example, Claymore? And a try hard in order to update it at plus 15 when I can take a Black Knight weapon and wipe the floor with bosses. Yes, on new game plus they are very meh, but most people don't even play Souls game on new game plus. On a base new game, Black Knight weapons do a shitload of damage, they have very good moveset and they are just simply better than other weapons, especially for new players. And because the Black Knight weapons just kill any weapon variety, I will put them on this list. Dark Souls 2. I know this will sound funny, but the words featured in Dark Souls 2 are life gems. Why? Well, because with life gems you can phase tank absolutely everything in this game. Unless you got one shot it, of course. Because of life gems, many hard locations became very easy. Simply because after taking any damage, you can just consume a one or two life gem and you are good to go. The best example of this is probably Poison Arena. Each time you got poisoned, just consume two life gems and that's it. And I won't even mention the fact that these life gems allow you to face tank absolutely
basically every single boss. You might sell that you also have big amount of healing both in Bloodborne and in Demon Souls, or that for example in Dark Souls 1, there was humanity that could full hell heal you, and yes, you are correct, but for example in Demon Souls, you only had grass, which also was pretty expensive in early game, while in Dark Souls 2, you not only have life gems, you also have estus, and unless you got jumped by 5 enemies at the same time, you will simply face tank everything in this game, simply because you have way too much healing source in this game. Now about humanity in Dark Souls 1, yes, humanity is also a very good healing reg and consumable, but it has other purpose in this game other than healing, and compared to life gems, it's very rare consumable. While in Dark Souls 2, not only you can have free variety of life gems, there are other healing sources, and unlike humanity, life gems have no other purpose in this game other than healing you. You might say, don't like life gems? Don't use them. Yeah, 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 don't use life gems. Tell me how easy it is to clear iron key plus smelter demon without these life gems. When you have 4 or 5 at best S tools, basically you have two choices. Face tank absolutely everything because of life gems, or psychic dig 24 7 because you don't use life gems. Bloodborne. Chalice. I said about this many times, and I will say this as many times as it takes. Chalices are absolutely uninteresting garbage, in which absolutely everything is bad. I already said everything I want to say in this video, so I will just add pretty big part of my video here. If you already saw my video, you can skip to this time code. I absolutely hate every single aspect of these chalices. First of all, they are nearly identical. While I was running around in this chalice, I always had a question. Uh, wait a second. I already cleared this chalice, no? Secondly, you need to clear this chalice. No matter how hard Maple claim that this corner is optional, you need to clear these nearly identical chalices in order to get good stones for weapons. In the main game, you won't find decent stones for weapons, and without these stones, even with Saw Cleaver, you will do pretty shitty amount of damage. So, want it or no, you have to clear these chalices. Third, bosses in the chalices are just mwah. You will kill the same basic mobs with HP bar or same chalice bosses over and over and over and over and over and over. I will name you a few bosses and how many times you can kill them. Pig at least 5 times, Brain Sucker at least 4 times, Liz Pyromancer 5 times, Pyromancer Dog 4 times, 3 Fat Musketeers 4 times, Liz Stupid Giant at least 3 times each type of them, and my absolutely favorite boss, Liz Stupid Fire Dog will absolutely retire hitboxes and just unjustifiable damage with his charge hit that can just one shot you from full HP at least 6 times. And not only them, here you will find another Celestials, another Bloodsucker, another Ebrietas, another Amygdala, and my absolute favorite, another Parl. Are the last four supposed to be, well, I don't know, unique bosses, both lore and gameplay wise? And finally, balance in this chalice are absolutely broken. In early game, when you visit first chalice, everything will scream that yes, it's early game chalice, because basic mobs drop you small amount of souls, and they do plus minus reasonable amount of damage, but when you enter in Undead Giant's boss arena, you will realize that he can just one shot you, like straight up one shot you. I nearly dropped the chalice so many times, because not only they are identical, not only they are absolutely boring and unbalanced, you need to farm some random stuff in order to access deeper level of chalices. I really, really wanted to fight Yarnam's queen, but after fighting bigger version of Pearl, I just said, fuck this dumb shit, because I was done fighting both him and his camera, while barely doing any damage to him, while he could just vanish me with each of his touch. Dark Souls 3 Locations And no, unlike 90% of Dark Souls 3 haters, my problem is not the fact they are way too linear. Like, I am so done with people who complain about Dark Souls 3 being a linear game, when their arguments are, game doesn't allow me to get OP Thunderstick before Fuse Bush. The worst thing about Dark Souls 3 locations.
locations is the fact they are absolutely unmemorable and uninteresting. Yeah, there are a few memorable locations such as Ringed City, Irithil, Cathedral, Ariandel, and a few others, but here is the thing. Not sure if you realize that, but most locations are actually different from each other. For example, Swamp Arena, Catacomb, Lotrix Castle, Demon Ruins, and a few others, but they all are very unmemorable, and you know why? Because of the stupid dead grey color gamma, which just kills all atmosphere. If you replay Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2, you will realize that almost all locations have a different color gamma, which gives this location a very memorable atmosphere. But Dark Souls 3 has Bloodborne Location Syndrome, a game in which game devs just choose one color gamma, and you are just playing grey screen simulation. Fuck it, I will give you the best example. Let's take Anor Londo. Remember how memorable was Anor Londo in Dark Souls 1? In Dark Souls 3, let's say how it is. It's far from being memorable. The only reason many people even remember about Anor Londo in Dark Souls 3 is because of Dark Souls 1. Dark Souls 3 was my first Souls game, and I swear to you, Faron Key was 100 times more memorable for me than Anor Londo. So, yeah, because of this stupid dead grey abandoned castle ruin simulation, I will put locations of Dark Souls 3 on this list. Sekiro. Oof. There are so many bad features or to be more specific, bad things in Sekiro, but the worst feature in my opinion is Mortal Draw and Firecracker. And no, it's not a joke, I am 100% serious about that. You might say that they are extremely good combat arts and arm tools, and if you combine these two together, you can wipe the floor with any boss besides Demon of Hate. And yeah, that's my whole point. They are simply way too good. Separately, they are good on their own and are the best combat art and arm tool in this game. And if you combine both of them, they are god, what can you do to bosses in this game? It's not even funny. They are simply way too good compared to other arm tools and combat art. Let's imagine that I play Sekiro for the first time and I have Ichimonji double, the very first combat art and Mortal Draw. Can someone give me at least one good reason? Why should I ever use Ichimoji Double that barely does any damage to a boss, even if you made a direct hit, when Mortal Draw allows me to just remove this boss face from this game? The same thing can be said about Firecrackers. Why should I even use a spear that is absolutely piece of shit, when I can use Firecrackers blind enemy and use Mortal Draw or any other combat art? Unless you want to be creative, there is not even a single reason to use anything other than Mortal Draw and Firecrackers, simply because they are just better than anything else in this game. They just kill all interest for a player to experience with arm tools and combat arts. I know for a fact that most new players don't use anything else in this game other than this two. Fuck it, even I never used anything else other than this two until my last playthrough. And it's not because I and many others are casuals who can't praise more than one button. The reason of flood boils down to one very simple question. Why should I even use anything else other than Mortal Draw and Firecrackers? They are simply way too strong. And you don't even need to do some crazy stuff in order to get them. And because of that, I'll put Mortal Draw and Firecrackers on this list. And now Elden Ring. Well, I say this many times. I and I will sell this as many times as it takes. Summons are a huge problem of Elden Ring. Why? Well, simply because with summons you can turn any boss apart while beating your meat with the other hand, but if you play this game without summons, you have to fight against bosses that not only spam you will anime our Vombo combos who were designed to fight multiple enemies at once. The best example of this is Radagon. Each of his moves is a huge spell 
simulation move. Lad can hit both you and your summon at the same time. You might thought in previous games there also were summons. And yes, you are correct, but here is the thing. You could summon either NPC or another player. And if you summon them, bosses and basic moves will be more tanky. But in Elden Ring, if you summon Mimic tier, bosses won't receive bonus stats. Summons in Elden Ring can be described as 350% health and damage reduction of a boss. You might say that summons can solo bosses, therefore they are balanced. And no? First of all, there actually are a few summons who can actually kill bosses almost solo. And secondly, they don't have to kill bosses to be useful. Summons such as Oleg, Engwal, Capra Demon, Stone Golem, and a few more aren't useful because they can solo bosses, but because they can destruct them, which allows you to hit bosses from behind, and they also help you to poise break bosses much faster. And this is without mentioning summons like Mimic Tear, Dung Eater, or Tisha, who can torn bosses apart almost solo. Because of summons, eldering bosses are just boring, because it's always either, oops I and my summon whooped the shit out of this boss, or oh, boss decided to spam me with his anime our hits and I guess I died. Amazing. And because of that, I think that summons are the worst feature of Elden Ring. Well, that's pretty much it. Type what do you think about my video. With this, I will say bye bye to you and I will see you next time.